hey, honors physics students, here are some ideas about circular motion that I think would be really useful to understand the, at least the finish of chapter six. And uh, so during this description, as you look at this video, uh, hopefully somebody will click pause every once in a while and say, for instance, if I ask a question and you wonder about it, um, uh, possibly clicking pause will give you a chance to answer it, then you can click play again and, and keep going. So uh, the reason to study about this is uh, not only did we study projectile motion, which is an object that moves uh, under the effect of gravitational field, but many things uh, in the universe go in either circular motion or very close to circular motion. Well, what can you think of that goes in circles that you could study about? One of the things that I could think of, for instance, are uh, planets rotate on their axis. Uh, planets go around a star. Um, in a washing machine, as you watch the spin cycle, as the drum spins around, it's going in a circle. You can think of a lot of other things, tires on a car, many things like that. But everything you think of, uh, represents something as it goes around in a circle that has a direction for the velocity. So as you look at this diagram here, you can see the velocity vector is tangent to the circle. So the velocity vector being tangent to the circle at every single moment uh, keeps changing its direction. So you, it's, it's not useful necessarily to say what's the direction of the velocity and that it's forward, but instead tangent to the circle. So it's changing direction, but we're going to talk about going only a constant speed. Now, a lot of things speed up and slow down in a circular motion, but we're going to be focusing just on the things that go a constant speed. And But many of them do that, and that's not a problem. So recognize the direction is tangent the circle continues to change. Now, as you see here in this picture, uh, every circle has a radius, the distance from the center of the circle out to the edge is the radius, and if you can imagine an object that starts at any uh, random point there, and as it travels around the circle, keeps going around the circle, oops, see if I can get that back again, <clears throat> as it travels around the circle, I know I can get that back. From this spot right here, all the way around to that spot again, the distance it travels is actually the circumference of the circle. So it's useful in this circumstance <clears throat> to define the velocity as the circumference divided by time. So this becomes a very important formula. It's one of the formulas on your formula sheet. The velocity of an object is the circumference divided by the time. Capital T has special meaning. It's the period of revolution. Now hopefully um, you're looking at your notes as you do this and taking some notes down like you usually do. So capital T is the seconds per one revolution. Lowercase t in physics stands for uh, any random time, a particular time, but capital T is specifically means the period of revolution. Now, if um, you analyze the velocity vectors, and of course there are an infinite number from beginning in a circle all the way around once, uh, you can imagine two almost random velocity vectors, uh, one v one and 1 v 2 as you see here. 1 is going, uh, so you can see that um, v 1 is heading toward the east and v 2 is heading toward the south. So the question is, uh, do we have any kind of acceleration? So you might say, well, it's going at constant speed, so there's no acceleration, but you know better. We studied in chapter 5 how velocity vectors that change direction mean there's an acceleration. So the acceleration is the change of velocity divided by time. So this change of velocity that you see right there is not zero because the velocity vectors are connected tail to tail or use the I and J method. <coughs> so if you look at the following diagram, so look in this diagram, you can see if you put the V1 and V2 together tail to tail as you expect to do, the subtraction vector is that red vector and look that it points toward the center of the circle. In other words, as you go around a circle, if you start going east and later on you're going south a quarter of the turn later, the acceleration vector points toward the center of the circle. In other words, by F equals MA, in order to accelerate, something must be pulling, and the direction of the pulling is toward the center 
of the circle. So there's a sentence here, and you can see, recall that the direction of the velocity change is the same as the direction of the acceleration. So <clears throat> the velocity changes toward the center, the acceleration is toward the center of the circle. Now you look at that picture, you can see the velocity change, the acceleration toward the center. Now well, there's an interesting word, and it really comes from the Latin roots, um, centripetal acceleration is what we're talking about here. A lot of times <coughs> we will give it <coughs> the symbol A sub C. Okay, so the A sub C would be the centripetal acceleration. That comes from the Latin root center pointing, centripetal. Whenever there's a centripetal acceleration, it's because something must be pulling toward the center of that circle. Now, if this is a little fast, remember clicking pause can give you a chance to think about it and talk about it. Again, the same diagram I showed before. So A sub C is the centripetal acceleration. It's the acceleration that is toward the center of any circle. Okay, always true. So whenever there's a centripetal acceleration, um, it will be pulling by a centripetal force toward the center of the circle. I have two formulas for this, a sub c equals v squared over r, v being the speed that something's moving around in the circle. Or a sub c could be 4 pi squared r over capital T squared. And capital T, remember, is the amount of time it takes to go around once. Both of those are great. But by f equals ma, every time you have a centripetal acceleration, you must have a centripetal force. So you can see the only difference between those is that there's a mass involved. So centripetal force is mv squared over r, and centripetal force is m4 pi squared r over t squared. Now, if you had the centripetal force, what do you think the m stands for? Of course, the m stands for the mass of the object, but which object are we talking about? So for instance, if the moon is orbiting around the Earth, the Earth has a mass, and the moon has a mass. But the mass that's uh, the letter M is the thing that's moving around. And so that'd be the mass of the moon as it goes around the Earth. So F sub C is the centripetal force. Now, the centripetal force, I'd like you to take note of something. The centripetal force is F sub C. The misconception is that there is a thing called centrifugal force. So centripetal force is the active force. It is the force pulling toward the center of the circle. There is no such thing as the centrifugal force. It is a reaction force. It's certainly something that's a part of uh, the vocabulary. However, it's a reaction force. The force that's pulling, if you twirl the ball on a string, the force that's pulling is the centripetal force, the tension on the spring. But if the ball had feelings, it would feel like it's being thrown outward. And so that would be a centrifugal force that's pulling it outward, um, the experience of the centrifugal force. Uh, for instance, there is, uh, in your washing machine, um, if the clothes are being pulled inward toward the center, of course, they don't move inward when it's spinning, but what's happening is the drum is spinning so quickly that the water is leaving tangent to the circle. And so the water in a, in a washing machine is going out of a little hole, and, it, and the water goes in a velocity that's tangent to the circle. It is the clothes are being pulled this way, but they don't move toward the center because they're going so fast sideways. If the clothes were tiny, they would go out of the holes also. The, most people would believe the water is being thrown out by a centrifugal force. They are not. The only active force is the centripetal force toward the center of the circle. So centripetal force is an active force. Centrifugal force is a figment of your imagination. There's even a, the, a particular ride in some amusement parks where you go inside the ride and, the, um, and you stand in there and it's in a room that is a circle with wooden, wooden walls. And as you stand against the wall, with your back against the wall, it twirls faster and faster. Suddenly they drop the floor away and you stick to the wall. Now you're sticking to the wall, many people believe, by a centrifugal force that pushes you outward. That's wrong. 
actually what's happening is you're spinning really fast. Your velocity and inertia carries you tangent to the circle. But the wall is pulling in on you to keep you from flying out. So that's the centripetal force. You feel as though you're being thrown out, but that's a feeling. That's a fiction you make up with your mind. And so there you go. So there's some information about circular motion. Thank you.